I'd like to welcome you all to the first lecture in our new Visiting Writers program. We are Elk River Arts and Lectures. Uh, there are Elks around us. For the last six years, we've been bringing all kinds of uh, artists and writers into the schools and to give free lectures to the public. In a few minutes, you'll be hearing from two New Yorkers, a mother and son team, no less, who individually and together have created some of the most amazing books, paintings, and exhibits any of us is likely to see. With um, unbridled joy, I would like to introduce people that I admire and my friends, Alex and Myra Coleman. We're so grateful to have been invited. We've had such an amazing time. We've been in, uh, you know, the generosity of all of you and, and especially of uh, Ruth and Walt. And I think that given the, um, we said the other night that they gave us the gift of uh, time. time and blueberry pancakes. And I think that that pre pretty much covers everything that you really need in life. And I, you know, we, we were, we've been very productive. I think I wrote two books and you wrote three books in, in three days that we've been four. here. Four. Four, four. From, this is a map that my mother made of the United States. I'm assuming that you all know what the United States actually looks like, and so you understand how demented this is and how deranged this is. And uh, the, it came from a project that I was doing for the New York Times. I was doing a year of American history, and it was called And the Pursuit of Happiness. So this is Sarah Berman's Closet. This is a book about Sarah and her journey to America and eating lemon ices and the meaning of time. In the little village of Lenin in Belarus, there lived a large and reasonably happy family. They lived in a collection of shacks next to the muddy river Sluch. Yes, there were pogroms. Yes, there was deprivation. But life was not all bad. There was a blind goose herder. There were wild blueberry forests where the children ran wild and a grandfather with a six-foot-long beard who never spoke. Okay, so that's me, more or less. And so growing up in the household, there wasn't a choice but to be curious and to look around. That it was a real schooling and it was a real education in really paying close attention to the world around you, knowing that if you are able to look around and you are able to be curious that you will never be bored. Thank you. If they have the thought that this is going to be art, if they make it, then it is art. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. So the assignment that we gave you was meant to be easy on one level, to just say you don't have to think very hard. You just have to respond to something that you really love. And what is it that you find around you that's not expensive? and not fancy, and that's really, it's really, tr really terrific. Dragon, rainbow dragon, because it's art, so I figured something colorful would be appropriate for it. Um, I found it interesting because it was like art and everything, and it fell off my shelf when I was looking for things, and I was like, that's perfect. <laughs> yeah. You heat up the rock in the oven. Yeah, and then you, and then you, can put you, crayon yeah, you melt crayon on it. Yeah. Okay, so mine is a shell that I borrowed. So you invented a new animal? Yeah. Back in Virginia, and that's it. That's great. It provokes memories. I brought a picture of my horse with a hat on, because why not? And <laughs> that's great. It, it's from a really good friend that I don't get to see anymore, so. Yeah. What is it? It's roast and it's medium, rich <laughs> and smooth. <laughs> Next time you go to the supermarket, just read the products that are on the shelves because something like rich and smooth, which is like, you know, what does that even mean? Uh, is really an interesting, how is language used on products? And you don't have to buy them, you can just look at it. It's endlessly interesting. Okay, next. Um, I brought this teddy bear because it was sitting in my closet and it looked lonely. And my bracelet reminds me of my mom every day because um, <laughs> I am finally with her after fighting for 12, almost uh, a lot of years. Um, and it just reminds me of her and how much she cares about me. It's hard to 
pay attention to things that don't call out for your attention and many things don't call out for your attention. So it's an exercise of looking carefully and figuring out how to make something interesting. What was nice about this is that everybody loosened up and when they had to draw their object, they got excited about it. And then when they started doing portraits of each other, it kind of led to a, a really enthusiastic interaction. This is the uh, pool toy, the censored pool toys from Saudi Arabia. So then I opened museum and this is museum. And uh, it's been a wonderful experiment and something that is small but people from around the world come to and some people spend hours in there. And I see it as a form of journalism that rather than text-based journalism or photojournalism or video journalism, that this is object journalism. One Friday morning, in a burst of personal expression, she decided to wear only white. She starched, ironed, folded, and stacked everything with loving care and precision. All of it was grand, and her closet was the grandest of all. There was a place for everything, and everything was in its place. It was truly, indubitably, without question, the most wonderful day. Love, M. Great. So. So that's that. That's it. I think that's our evening. Thank you. <laughs>